Now in section 2.2, we're gonna talk about lags and autocorrelation. So first, let's define a random walk. So a random walk is something where each value in a time series is just a random movement from the previous one. So if I wanna know where you are at time t, I just look at the previous time plus a little random error term. So um, I've got some random walks here that I generated using code that I got from the textbook authors. Um, and these were all generated to look like the Apple stock data, but one of them is the real Apple stock data and the other three are just random walks. And if you've read the textbook section, you might be able to pick out that this is the real Apple stock data, but I think if you, if you didn't know that a priori, um, these all look about the same. They're, you know, they sort of randomly go up and down. Um, and it turns out that stock prices basically are random walks. They're very hard to model using time series because they just look like uh, random noise. So we've got the Apple stock. Here's that same plot, but I've just made it into a full slide. You can see it's kind of moving up and down over time. Um, so that was random walks. We're also gonna define a difference. So we can have a first difference of a time series. So that would be defined as a delta, uh, which would be uh, the time right now minus whatever was going on the previous time step. And you could have second differences, you know, the time right now minus two time steps ago. You could have, uh, you know, a 12 unit difference, uh, you know, for a year ago, which would be now minus a year ago. Um, but if we had a random walk where we've got a uh, y, t is the previous time plus a random error, then the delta t is uh, the yt minus the previous time, which is just equal to that random error. So uh, if you have a random walk, then when you look at the differences, it should just look like random noise. So let's look at this Apple stock data. Um, I have uh, taken the price, which is the price of the stock every day. Uh, so, you know, on the seventh um, or uh, on the 21st of July, uh, the price was $99.40. On the 22nd, it was $98.07. And then I can make a difference where I take the price minus a lagged version of the price. So uh, for this time period, I would take the 98.7 minus 99.4 and get a difference of negative 77 cents. It went down a little bit between those two days, and then it went down a dollar and 32 cents, and then it went down 67 cents, and then it went up 6.28 dollars, etc. So I've got this new column, which is differences. And so I could plot a time series of those differences. And so this is the plot of those first differences. It says warning removed one row containing missing values. And that's because we never have uh, the difference uh, for, the first, um, for the first row because there's nothing to subtract uh, uh, for that one. So, uh, or if we had second differences, we would have two NAs at the beginning of our, um, our data. So this is just uh, basically random noise. Uh, another idea that we need to introduce is the idea of autocorrelation. And autocorrelation is essentially the correlation between values that are a, some number of time units apart. So um, we could look at the correlation between the price today and the price yesterday, or the price today and the price a year ago, and we could look at that correlation. Um, we could also do the correlation between today and, uh, and the difference, um, or we could do the correlation between the one unit difference and the two unit difference. So I could also do a lag two um, where I'm gonna do two days ago. Um, so I get two NAs at the top, but then for the 25th, I'm saying uh, 97.3 minus 99.4 is negative $2.09. Um, and again, looking two days previous, looking two days previous. 
One way to compute the autocorrelation is to use the function ACF. Um, this comes from the forecast package, so you'd need to library forecast in order to use it. And um, if you just run ACF on a whole data set, you will get a time series plot for every single variable that's in your data set. So um, I'm using the base R format where I do the name of the data set and then I use a dollar sign and then the name of the variable that I want to use. Um, and this will make an ACF plot of that price variable. And so what this is showing me is that at lag one, I have strong autocorrelation. It looks like it's it's almost one. At lag two, also strong. Lag three, lag four, lag five, lag six. This dotted line here gives you sort of a rule of thumb for when you should worry about autocorrelation and when you should not. So it looks like somewhere around lag nine, uh, lag 10, we get to the point where we're not as worried about it. But there's, uh, there's some clear autocorrelation for these first few lags. Um, you can also tell uh, ACF that you don't want the plot. You just want to look at the numbers, and let me see if I can show them to you. So uh, zero lag, you get an autocorrelation of one. Anything correlated with itself is one. Uh, that lag of one, 0.95, lag of two, uh, 0.8, etc. So you can, you can also get R to just give you those numbers if you want. Um, and... Uh, and let's compare this uh, with a plot which has no autocorrelation. So this is just the autocorrelation plot of one of the lags, so the differences. Um, so this is just that, that difference, and none of these um, autocorrelations make it to the edge, so we're good. We don't have autocorrelation that we're concerned about. Um, and one of the reasons why you might want to look at the ACF plot is to determine if your time series is stationary. And stationarity basically means that things are staying the same over time. Um, and so much like other uh, types of conditions in models, we're going to be looking for evidence of a lack of stationarity. And the two things that we're going to look for are an overall increasing or decreasing trend in the data plot, like the time series, and then also an, a linear trend in the ACF plot. So let's think about the Apple prices. Um, so the Apple prices are not stationary. And the way that we can see that is there's sort of an overall increase over time. There is some randomness there, but overall it looks like the line uh, is trending up. So that means that the plot has some overall increase. And we can also see this in the ACF plot. We've got a linear decrease in the autocorrelation for the first few time steps. So, um, so we are concerned about a lack of stationarity with the Apple stock prices. Uh, for a comparison, the first differences of Apple stock prices are stationary. It looks like, uh, you know, in the time series plot, they're basically staying flat. There's a little bit of variability, but, but nothing major. Um, and then if we look at the ACF, nothing is reaching to the edge there. Okay. Um, one more thought about differences. So we can have um, differences on any type of lag. So we could have a seasonal difference. Um, so we could compare, uh, you know, a delta 12, um, you know, today's data versus uh, a year ago. So to compare to the same uh, day or month uh, from the previous year. So let's go back to our butter prices data. That was the one um, that we were modeling, I think, with seasonal means and also a linear trend before. Uh, so this has some periodicity, but it's also, it looks like decreasing over time. We could look at an ACF plot for this data. And so it looks like we've got, uh, you know, significant lags at one, two, three, four. So I've got that kind of um, linear trend in the first few uh, points of my ACF plot, which is uh, suggesting that there's a lack of stationarity here. But we also see uh, that there's kind of a decrease and then an increase in the autocorrelation. So this is showing me that there might be, again, some periodicity. We can really see it from the time series plot, but we can also see it in the ACF. Um, and again, we could look at the, uh, the time series plot of the first differences, uh, which looks like this, looks like just a bunch of randomness. 
And if we look at the ACF plot, I have one leg that's going over the threshold for us being concerned about autocorrelation, but that could just be the result of random chance. Um, it's sort of like a 95% confidence interval there, so we'd expect one out of 20 to just sort of randomly cross that boundary, so maybe we don't really need to be concerned about that. So that was section 12.2. Um, it was just telling us about differences and autocorrelation. And it was essentially setting us up for section 12.3,